If you're Patrick, then who's that? <laughs> Even if you don't know anything else about Godzilla besides the fact that it exists, you probably also know there is a robotic version of the character. Mechagodzilla is easily one of the most popular characters in the franchise, having appeared in no less than 5 movies, or as many times as Rodan and Andrews. I mean, he was featured in Ready Player One last year, you can't get more exposure than that, making a super unexpected and out of place analogy. If Ghidra, Goji, Mofra and Rodan are Cartman, Kyle, Stan and Kenny, so Mechagodzilla is Butters, appearing just enough to be a borderline main character and therefore able to be heavily featured without any sort of backlash from the fans. And this popularity began with the character's very introduction, Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla, the movie that was supposed to be the celebration of the franchise's 20th anniversary. Not that there is anything particularly different about this film to mark the occasion, despite the fact that they visibly put more money into it, but whatever. The action kicks off with the discovery of an ancient statue of mythological monster King Shiza, alongside with a prophecy that links the creature to an upcoming catastrophe. The artifact is being studied by archaeologist Keisuke in Psycho, when a robber tries to steal it from them at gunpoint. He fails and disappears into the night, but makes it clear that someone is after the thing. Later that day, Godzilla suddenly appears from a volcanic explosion not far from there. The monster is making his way through the Japanese countryside when out of nowhere comes Angerus to fight him. And if you are wondering why he was buried underground, it's because it was actually written as a scene featuring another monster other than Angerus, but you know the suit problem. The battle that follows is accompanied by one of the catchiest scores in the entire franchise. I love this song so much. During the battle, Goji's skin gets injured, revealing a shiny metallic layer underneath it. Peace as hell, Godzilla gives Zangrus the beatdown of his life, which is saying a lot actually. Concluding with... Ah, the pain. So that's where Kong learned this. Know your fucking place, trash. Everybody wondered why the two monsters who until two movies ago were friends were fighting, but whatever. They have more pressing matters to attend to. Kesku's brother, Masahiko, for example, is unsettled about the strange piece of metal he found while hiking in a cave. Professor Miyajima, played by a charmingly aged Akihito Hirata, identifies the material as being of extraterrestrial origin. Curious, he asks Masahiko to take him to the cave where he found the metal. On their way to the place, however, they see their path blocked by another one of Godzilla's rampage of destruction. Except this time Goji is confronted by none other than... Goji? And if you are wondering why he was buried underground... I don't know either. The two Godzillas engage in a vicious battle that exposes even more of the imposter's metallic skin. Eventually, fake Godzilla gives up on the disguise and reveals himself to be a mechanical copy of Goji, in what is the best scene of the franchise. You can fight me in the comments if you want. Also, the soundtrack. Again, how do they do it? And I don't care if you say it's out of place. The monsters measure forces in a fierce confrontation, but ultimately, Godzilla gets tossed into the ocean, apparently very injured. Mecha Godzilla is in no better shape though, having to fly away from the destruction it caused. The other day, the archaeology do come to the conclusion that the appearance of Mecha Godzilla must be connected to the statue prophecy, and that the only way of defeating the robot must be summoning King Shiza by returning the artifact to the temple where it belongs. So they both take a cruise and head to the statue's place of origin at Okinawa. During the travel, however, they are attacked by the same robber from before. 
While fighting with Keisuke, he gets shot, revealing his true non-human nature. In the deck and in possession of the statue, our monkey man gets shot by an unknown person and falls into the water with King Shizu. Our heroes are devastated by the loss of the artifacts and... Oh well, everything seems to be fine then. What was the point of the last scene again? Somewhere else, Godzilla is dramatically recharging his powers through lightnings, an ability he has never demonstrated before but that's not the first time. Meanwhile, Masahiko, the professor and his daughter, your guess to what he should do in there is as good as mine, are exploring the cave in which he found the space metal when they are captured by the masterminds behind Mechagodzilla, aliens from the Black Hole Planet 3, who want to destroy humanity for one reason or another. They are actually introduced earlier in the movie and their role is very apparent from the get-go, but I didn't mention it because this film could use a little bit more mystery. The alien's plan, however, is currently halted because the robot has suffered severe damage in its last battle. And the only one who can rebuild it is Professor Miyajin. He says no. They threaten to kill his daughter and Masahiko. He says yes. And if you are wondering why the only person who can fix an alien robot is a human scientist... Shut up and watch the movie! Keisuke and Psycho discover that his brother hasn't come to his hotel for a while and decide to investigate the cave where Masahiko found the alien metal. There, they would have been shot by one of the alien goons if not for Interpol agent Nambada, who had been trailing the two for some time now. He even introduced himself earlier in the movie as a freelance journalist, and I didn't mention it because it's hard enough as it is to condense these films into 10 minute videos. Anyway, after fixing Mecha Godzilla, Miyajima falls victim to one of the classic blunders and is thrown into the execution chamber alongside his daughter and students. Thankfully, Keisuke and Nambara had just infiltrated the alien base and are able to save the three of them before it's too late. Then our heroes decide to split, with the professor, his students and the Interpol agent returning to the base in order to destroy it, and the others rush into the Okinawa temple to wake King Shizu. When arriving at the temple, the good guys are embossed by the aliens, but saved at the last minute by Interpol agent Tamura, who has never been mentioned until this very moment. With the statue in its place, King Shiza is revealed to be sleeping under a mountain. But since these days we can't get a movie without a song in it, the temple's princess performs one to wake the creature up. It works, and King Shiza rises to fight Mecha Godzilla. The monster is very fast and agile, basically because he's a guy in a fursuit instead of rubber, but even the powerful Shizu has a hard time defeating the mechanic aberration. Of course, this is still a Godzilla movie, and the titular monster appears just in time to join forces with the giant dog to save the world. Even with the numbers against him, Mechagodzilla is still a formidable foe, never allowing his opponents to get too close of him, where they would have the advantage. But this is not a problem for Godzilla, who summons the power of the lightnings he absorbed before turning himself into a giant magnet that drags the robot close enough for Goji to grab him, giving Shizu the chance to beat the crap out of the villain. Godzilla then delivers the final blow, twisting the robot's head until it falls off, ending his threat for good. At the alien's base, the other half of the good guys disrupt the invaders' control panels and destabilize the whole complex making it explode and wait a minute because I've just realized Godzilla turned himself into a giant magnet. So the alien invasion is no more. King Shiza goes back to its beauty sleep under the mountain, while Godzilla returns to the ocean after defeating an alien monster for the 20th time. After a painfully long series of bad movies, it pleases me a lot to comment on this one, because it's fun as hell. Yes, the script can be aggressively obtuse at times, completely ignoring certain screenwriting conventions, 
but the fact is that this installment has some of the best, most stylish and well-executed action sequences of the franchise that somehow don't rely on old footage from previous movies, which these days counts as a little miracle to me. Also, Mechagodzilla and King Shiza are great additions to the franchise roster, due both to their awesome design as well as the already mentioned action sequences that allow them to shine like other monsters rarely do. All of this makes for one of the best movies in the franchise and certainly the best Jun Fukuda directed. But Mechagodzilla was not done yet, and neither was Ichiro Honda, because Godzilla's daddy would return for one last hurry before retiring from the franchise for good with Terror of Mechagodzilla, the movie that would close the first chapter of Godzilla's history in a dramatic fashion.